in this section of the tool we are going to create our world map. But before we get started on that, I have a few things I would like to show you and share with you. So some people have requested that we will add another character. And because of that, I have had these sprites created for a night so that we can actually have a spell casting character in our wizard and a melee character in our knight. And because we have two characters, we will also be implementing some kind of character selection screen in the start of the game. So as you can see here, he have five different animations. He has walk animations, an attack with sword, and attack with the shield. And it's basically up to, up to us when we start implementing this, if the shield should block or attack, or maybe do both. And then we have the idol and the death animation over here. So because we have this character here, we will also have to have some new icons. So I've also added some new icons here. And these are going to be the attack icons and the s equipment icons. And then, then over here, we have the talent icons. Okay, so these are the talent tree icons that we will add for the knight. So besides the knight, people have also requested that we could add some kind of um, uh, water to our game. Well, right now we are going to generate our world, so I've also added some different water tiles so that we can generate like water on our map exactly the way that we want it. And I'll show you in a minute how this works. So if you want to get the new sprites I just showed you, you simply have to go and re-download the asset folder from the place where you got the sprites in the first place. Uh, if you do that, then the sprites will be inside the RPG asset folder. And other thing I would like to show you is this. This is a G910 Orion Spectrum keyboard from Logitech. And you can actually win this keyboard if you support me on Patreon. This means that in the end of this month, I am going to make a um, random draw between all my patrons that has supported me at some point in, in this month, which is October 2017. Um, and one of you guys are going to win this. Um, based on what you support me with, you will have an X amount of tickets inside this lottery. So if you support me with $5, your name will be five times inside the lottery and you will have a bigger chance to win this. It doesn't really matter where you live in this world because I'm going to ship it anywhere. So if you live in Japan, I'm going to ship it to Japan if you win. If you live in US, I'm going to ship it there. Or if you live anywhere in Europe or something, I'm also going to ship it there. So basically anywhere you live, you are going to be able to win this. Um, one thing you need to know is that this keyboard is the Nordic version, which, which means that there is going to be three letters on the keyboard you might not be using if you're not from any of the Nordic countries. Anyway, the keyboard should still be usable even though there are three letters on it that you might not be using. So with that done, I think we should take a look at how we're going to generate our map. Our maps are going to be based on images. And on these images, each pixel will represent one tile in our game world. And that means if I want a map that is 100 by 100, then I need to create a new image that has 100 times 100 pixels on it. You can use any program that can draw to uh, generate these maps. Uh, in this example, I'm using Photoshop, but you might as well just use, uh, use Paint or something that comes with Windows. That's exactly the same, as long as you can draw some pixels. So based on the colors on the image, we will be able to place tiles in our world. So if I take this map here and put it into Unity and play my game, then you'll see that we actually generate like a whole tile map of these uh, green tiles. So right now I'm just demonstrating and I'll of course explain how everything works and how we put it together later. So don't get confused because this just works. Um, I will of course explain you how we're going to do it in the actual tutorial part. So for example, if I had this and I would like to, let's say, generate a path instead, then I could maybe take this map here and draw some yellow uh, color on it. And if I save this and replace the original one I had called test map, and I play the game, well, then there's going to be a path on it now, as you can see, because I just drew that. So this is very nice uh, and an easy way to generate these things. And of course, I can also go in and say, I would like to create some water. So then I can select the blue color and just simply select that I want to draw some water here. Let's say we want some water here, and it's going to go down there, and it's also going to be something here. You can just put it exactly as you want. Now I'm just testing stuff, so I'm just drawing random stuff. So I'm going to replace my map and go back into Unity and replay the scene. And now I have lots of water here. So right now the player is not 
uh, colliding with it, but of course we're going to fix it so that he can't um, go over it. But as you can see, we just created some perfect water with right edges and everything, um, exactly the places where we were drawing it on the actual map. Besides that, we can also say, well, I would like some trees. Let's just take this map here and use that instead. This is a map I drew before. So I can go to my level manager and say, well, I would like to use another map. So go to my maps and use this one. And then I can say, well, I would also like some trees on it. So I have another layer. And basically, the other layer here will draw trees. The brown one is one type of tree. Uh, the the lighter brown one is uh, the, the other type of tree, and then we have the gray ones, which are skeletons, and the purple one is the player spawn point. So if I would take this and save it and load it into my map here, which I have here, then if I play, then my player gets a new start position where he is, and there's also some trees in the game. And I can just maximize this to make it easier for you to see. So now you can see the spawned skeletons, the places where I place them, and the player is placed over here where the purple dot is. I can demonstrate this by just taking the purple dot right here and I can place it maybe over here or something. This is just on the edge of the water. And then I need to remove the first one. And if I would take this and save it and replace the original one, then the player suddenly has a new spawn point in my game. As you can see now he's down here. Anyway, um, also we have trees, we can go behind them and they get, um, they will be transparent when we go behind them so that we can see where the player is actually walking behind the trees, if he has a clear path there. And yeah, so that's how our world is going to look. As you can see, um, the player's camera is also following him now and we can go up here and the camera will start following the player when he gets out of range of the, the center of the camera. And here we have some water. And you can see there are different kinds of water. We have these normal tiles that are blue, and there's a chance that that there will spawn some, uh, what are they, they call lily pads um, on, on the water. See, if I play it again, it's going to look a little different because it's a random factor I have in. So maybe there's no lily pads, maybe there's some. There's one here. And before, there were a little more here. So this is what we're going to do in this section. So. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope that you'll enjoy adding this to your game. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember that Inscope Studios is a community founded page, so please consider clicking the support link on the screen to see how you can support me and get something back in return.